Hey guys, so if you're pretty new to shopping from our eco-friendly or ethically made clothes, or even if you've been doing it for a while, it's kind of a guarantee that you're going to hit some road bumps or blocks. You also might encounter some criticism or curiosity. In this video, I'm going to talk about some common reasons and excuses I hear around shopping from our conscious clothing. I hope to clear up some misconceptions, give you some tips if you've hit any roadblocks, and generally discuss how we can have positive conversations, focusing on the things we have control over and can do given our individual situations. So the first is that sustainable fashion is not fashionable. Now this depends on your personal style and your definition of fashionable, but I usually see this in the context of people saying that eco fashion is all hemp hippie clothes or that organic clothing is just not their style. This I feel like is a bit of an outdated thought. Things have drastically changed, especially in the last few years, with more and more sustainable alternatives and fashion forward brands available. Now I still think there's a lot of room for growth and I would love to see more interesting and innovative designs. And if you do struggle to find ethical styles you like, shopping secondhand can be a great way to find unique pieces and also check out sites like Etsy where you can purchase directly from independent designers. Also sustainable fashion can refer to and mean so many different things that assuming that it's all the same and all the same style just doesn't make sense. The next one is that it shouldn't be our responsibility as customers to worry about these things. Companies should be doing the right things and governments should have proper regulations that protect people, animals, and the environment. In a perfect world, this would be true. Ideally, we could all go into a store, pick up a piece of clothing, and not worry about the ethics or impact. But unfortunately, that's just not the way things are. As consumers, we are part of the system, and I do think we have a responsibility to learn and inform ourselves and to try our best to make mindful decisions and reduce our impact. Next is that ethical fashion is expensive. So price can definitely be a big barrier when it comes to buying more sustainable and ethically made clothes. And depending on your financial situation, budget, and where you're used to shopping, there can be some big sticker shock when you see the prices. Now first I want to say that I of course recognize that everyone's financial situation is different, and this goes back to doing the best you can and making choices that are right for you. I've gotten a few requests to do a video on more affordable, sustainable fashion brands, and I will definitely make that for you guys, but just know that the prices are never going to be comparable to fast fashion prices. It's important to understand that the prices of ethical clothing are what they are for a reason, and better reflect the real or the true cost of the garments. And a quick side note, if you haven't seen the documentary The True Cost, I highly recommend watching it, and it's now available on Netflix. Ethical brands are not trying to rip you off and make crazy profits. The companies that are actually making the crazy profits are the fast fashion brands. When clothing is incredibly cheap, there are hidden costs that you're not actually seeing. These could be things like the people aren't paid enough, they don't have proper safety equipment, or there could be environmental costs like toxic chemical use or pollution. So while you might not be paying for it, someone or something else could be. So eco and ethical clothing is more expensive, but some things to consider are maybe buying less, but buying better. Can you divide your clothing budget up amongst fewer things? That way it doesn't actually end up costing you anymore. According to Elizabeth Klein, the author of Overdressed, Americans buy an average of 68 new garments every year. So even if those garments were bought very cheaply, that really adds up. If you don't already, consider shopping secondhand. It's an incredibly ethical way of shopping and can be very affordable. Depending where you go, it can even be cheaper than fast fashion. I've also seen a lot of people that when they declutter their closet, they sell their clothes and use that money to invest in a few good key items. Also, one of the benefits or results of having a capsule wardrobe is that you should buy less clothing, which often means that you can afford to pay a little bit more for the items you do choose to buy. Finally, regarding price, it might be helpful to look at things as a cost per wear kind of investment. For example, when I was a teenager, I had a ton of really cheap tank tops that would last me pretty much only the summer before they were too worn out. And now I have tank tops that are better quality and have lasted me for years and years. In the end, the better quality tank tops actually end up being cheaper when you look at how much wear I got out of them. Next is the idea that if we don't buy fast fashion, all the garment workers will lose their jobs. Or another version of this is that the garment workers are just happy to have a job or it's better than no job. 
So this is very complex, but there are some important things to think about. First, just because someone is willing to do a job to survive or to support their family doesn't mean that it's ever okay to take advantage of that or exploit them. Also, supporting fast fashion does not guarantee job security for the workers. The brands contract and subcontract out work. So a factory might get a huge order and then a couple months later they might get nothing because the brand has moved on to a cheaper factory. The company could also decide to just stop manufacturing in a particular country and move somewhere else. And fast fashion brands are not going to shut down overnight. What's more likely is that if they're selling less clothing, their orders will become smaller and hopefully the garment workers then don't have to work crazy long unpaid overtime. The brands can also definitely afford to take a hit to their profits and that will hopefully wake them up and encourage actual change. Also, on the other hand, by supporting ethical brands, you are helping them grow, which creates more jobs that are safe, supportive, and fair paying. The next thing is, I can't find my size, style, or a certain type of garment. So I completely get that if you're trying to shop more consciously and you can't find the things you're looking for, that can be really frustrating and discouraging. Unfortunately, we're just not at a point yet where there are ethical alternatives for everyone's needs. And so this goes back to doing what you can and trying your best. Some things to consider are shopping secondhand. See if there are any eco-fashion bloggers with a similar style or a body type to you and see where they get their clothes. No matter where you end up buying your clothing from, focus on things that are going to last you a long time. And along with that, care for your clothes so that they last and you have to replace them less often. And my next video will be all about caring for your clothes, so definitely check that out. Don't forget about tailors and the possibility of having things altered. If you have friends that are similar sizes, you can try doing clothing swaps. Also, I highly encourage you that if there's a company you purchase from that isn't very sustainable or ethical, email them. It's important to let them know that you'd like to see more eco-friendly products and better transparency around their manufacturing. The company might not realize that that's something their customers care about, and it might encourage them to improve and make changes. The last one is the idea that there are issues with everything. It's impossible to be 100% sustainable or ethical, and the things we do don't actually make a difference. So this is obviously a very pessimistic perspective. Unfortunately, I hear it a lot, but I also do kind of understand where this comes from. It's very easy to feel like these issues are just so complex and overwhelming, and once you start digging a little, you uncover more and more problems, which can make it feel like it's just unsolvable and incredibly discouraging. I've had a roller coaster of emotions and moments, especially in fashion school, where I just wanted to quit and have no part of the industry but ignoring the problems is obviously not going to solve them. So I think it's important to first recognize that nothing we do is going to be perfect, but small steps do matter and we're all going to continue to learn and get better and better. There's no single solution. As humans, we love a quick fix, something easy, just follow these steps and everything will be great, but the problems are too complicated for that. Real solutions and change has to come from a variety of places, from the brands, their workers, governments, and consumers. As consumers, we are only a part of this big process, but we can also make a difference. And while I think it's important to talk about the problems and issues, I also think it's important to balance that conversation and talk about the positive things that we all can do. As consumers, we have control over what we buy, what we do with and how we treat the things we buy, and what we say. I think it's up to each person to just try their best and figure out what works for your lifestyle, personal situation, and values. And you might feel like the things you do don't make a difference in the grand scheme of things, but they definitely add up. For example, it takes 2,700 liters of water to make one cotton t-shirt. That's the amount of water that you drink in two to three years. So just think about the huge impact it would actually have if people just bought a little less and didn't view clothes as disposable things to use a couple times. So I hope you found this video interesting, helpful, and maybe thought-provoking. I love to read your comments and would especially love to hear any ideas or opinions you have on the way we talk about these issues. Do you agree that we should try to approach it in a positive way, talking about the cans instead of the can'ts? 
Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.